Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsailVR.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to preview Stereo 180 VR live from your camera feed into a VR headset using Assimilate Live Effects. In this example, we're using the Canon R5C, and for the headset, I'm using a Quest 2. But this workflow can work with many different cameras and many different headsets. The most basic way to get the signal into the computer is to go from the HDMI out directly to a CamLink 4K, which is what I'll use for this demo. You can also go from the HDMI into an HDMI to SDI converter, then go to a video capture card on your machine, or you can go SDI to a monitor like a Shogun, then go SDI to a capture card. You can also go from the HDMI out on the Shogun to the CamLink 4K. Using this workflow allows us to record directly to the Shogun, and we can do playback from there as well. Of course, there are many different signal workflows, but make sure that you're using 4K rated HDMI cables or 12G SDI cables. On the R5C, make sure to check all the output settings with the correct resolution and make sure you get a clean feed. Okay, let's get started. Okay, you might need to manually download and install the Matchbox shaders. Go to this website here, logic-matchbook.org, and then go to download entire collection. After you've downloaded it, go ahead and unzip it. So right click and then extract the files. And you actually have to do it twice. You should be able to go in and see this shaders folder here. You can copy these, then go to C, Program Data, Assimilator, Plugin64, Matchbox. If you don't have this Matchbox folder, if this is empty, create a new folder called Matchbox, and then paste the shaders and everything else right in here. Close and restart Scratch, and you should be ready to go. All right, so when you first open Assimilate, you have a few different things here that you can change. The only thing we need to change right away is if you go to Video I.O. Settings, come up here to Devices, and if you're using a deck link, this is where you would enable that. In our example here, we're using the CamLink 4K, and make sure this is turned on. Make sure there is a input on input and you can leave this at default and you should see it here if you're not seeing it here you may have an issue with your cam link or your HDMI cord or, or maybe the settings from the camera are now not outputting HDMI so once you see it here you can go ahead and press close I'm gonna go ahead and create a new project we'll call this Canon tutorial create you can set these up um, however you want for now I'm just gonna say OK and enter project so the first thing to do once you've opened it is to go to Live Setup, and then you can use this basic capture, and then for the foreground camera, select your cam link. The cam link and the Canon can both send 4K, so you might want to experiment with this, but for now I'm just gonna leave it at 1920 by 1080, and press Create. So now that we've done that, we can see I have a live preview. This is me saying hi. This is a little strange. Uh, this is our <laughs> green screen and uh, our, our workplace here. It's a little bit of a mess right now. Just give me a break. Um, so there's a bunch of things we could do now, but I'm going to first show you how to stitch it. So if we go down to plugins and then under effects, go to the matchbox shaders that you installed. And then here you can turn off the display thumbnails, scroll down towards the bottom, we're looking for this one called UV Map 3 Viz. And you can go ahead and add this to favorites if you want. And then this is very, very important. Don't just double click it. Don't apply to layer. Make sure that you apply it on node. And this is gonna be true for a lot of live effects. You're gonna to wanna to add plugins to the node itself. So now that we've added this plugin, nothing's happened yet. You have to go down to plugins, oh, excuse me, down to inputs, and you can see that we have this UV map uh, slot here. So if we right click, import clip, and we'll navigate to our ST map, and we're going to use this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and press open. And now this is stuck to my mouse. I can drag it over to this UV map slot and push left click. And now you can see the, the image is upside down. So if you go over to node tree, so on your right over here, you have this menu. Come over to node tree. You do not want to flip the top one. You want to actually want to flip the source, which is here. 
So to do that, we click on the source, go down to media, and then hover over this to flip the shot. Click on that. And now we have side by side stitched 180 image. To preview this in headset, there's one more step we need to do. From the node tree on this top layer, we're going to go over to metadata, projection type. You'll need to restart, assimilate. And then when you double click on the project here, it should automatically work in your headset. And the other thing you can do now that we have this set up is that we can do press on this world tab. And we can look, we can look around like this. If you want to see the lenses, what you do is you go to settings. And then on the right view over here, it says spherical view. You can actually change the vignetting on the lens. So if you want to cover up some of the lens, so you don't see the lenses, you can do that. You can also turn it all the way off if you want. And to reset anything, you can hold down control and then click once on any box and it'll reset to the default settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and close settings. I'm gonna come back over here. And now I'm gonna show you a few more things that we might wanna do with this footage here. I'm gonna come, go ahead and come out of 360 mode. So let's say we wanted to denoise this footage. If I zoom in here, you can see it's actually quite noisy. So what the way to do that would be go to plugins under effects. You can do denoiser and again make sure you apply on node. And now if I go all the way up you can see it. Um, it's denoising it in real time. And it shouldn't add too much uh, performance hit. It's actually really quite amazing. So now we have denoising here. And then another thing that you might want to do is clone stamp. So for instance, let's say you want to get rid of this, this um, lens here. To do that, go to plugins, effects, vector paint, apply on node. And then the way that the clone stamp works is Basically, you, in your vector paint tool settings here, you can choose how much feather is here. So let's go ahead and choose something like that. You can choose the size here. You can also choose the brush size here. To move these sliders in scratch, you can see that I'm going in a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. Uh, so you do that just like you would like with color wheels. You don't actually move it left or right. So now under paintbrush, change this to clone. Hold down control and then hold down left click on the area you want to copy. I'm, I'm still holding down control and left click and I go to the start point of where I want to start painting and then I paint with left click. So I'm going to do something kind of extreme here and press play and then you can see this is actually working in real time. So it's clone stamping it but it's also working in real time which is again insane. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and uh, undo that. Um, let's do something a little bit more realistic. So let's take the size down. Let's go to 20. Yeah, that's a good size. Hold down control. Hold down left click. And I'm just going to clone this eye. That'll be okay. And then I'll clone this eye over here. Paint out this part right there. It's not perfect, but you can see uh, how helpful it could be. And again, this is live, so if I, if you look to the, if you look where my my watch is on the right eye, you can see something weird is happening. It's because it's cloning it from. Well, you can't see. <laughs> it's cloning it from one side and stamping it on the other. So you're going to see, you know, my hand is further. So the further away I go because I cloned something further away, the better it's going to look. But the, 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 the interesting thing is that it's live. So there is, I'm sure there's a way to set it to be a static. But um, yeah, for now, that's, that's all we need to do there. If I want to add a color pass, what I might do is just add a layer. 
and I'll call this CC for color correction. And then I can grade, take down the desat, take down the saturation a little bit, and do whatever I need. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.